Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Michael's Corner. Um, oh my goodness. What a wild month it has been so far. Um, I just fully, I am fully recovered from the MAW Grand Slam 4 show. So, oh my goodness. Um, it, what a show it was. Um, you know, um, M.A.W. was featured on the news and whatnot, and now I'm coming to find out that M.A.W. and Steel Domain Wrestling is doing a Supercar 3 show in January, so that will be a lot of big show, um, so I'm just so excited. Um, I'm so excited to, you know, be part of that. Um, I'm sure you guys heard the news that uh, not only Mick Foley will be at the Supercar 3 show in January, but WWE Hall of Famer Billy Gunn will also be at the show come January 27th of 2023. So, yep, I got to be a part of that. So, well, let's not waste any time, shall we? Um, tonight, I'm interviewing Draco. Now, I was supposed to interview him like a week ago, but, you know, everything... Everything just got so busy, busy um, at that Grand Slam 4 show. I didn't get a chance to interview him and whatnot. So now, since now I'm fully recovered from that show, I decided to just interview him tonight. So I am brave enough to miss Miss half of wrong to do this interview. So let's not waste any more time. Let's bring him on. Okay. Hopefully I did that right. <laughs> oh. What's up? How's it going? Good, good, good. Everything is good. That's good. I've been wanting to interview you for the longest. <laughs> yeah. Finally, finally it's happened. Yeah, finally it's happened. Um, so first off, um, what did you think of MAW Grand Slam 4? I know we talked about this um, last night, but Let's talk about it again in front of my YouTube audience and and whatnot. I think it was a great show. I was really enjoying working uh, for MAW and especially being in this show. I mean, like, it was good. Mm hmm I yeah, had a... I think... Oh? Yeah. I think it was a great show. I mean, I mean, the turnout was awesome. You know, fans enjoy the wrestling action and whatnot. Um, it was it was great. It was a great turnout, and can't wait to do it again next year. You know. Yep. Yep. So, um, so um, I have some questions for you. Um, sure. Let's just not waste any more time. Um, how did you get your start in wrestling? Or what uh, made you become a wrestler? Um, all my life, I was a big fan of professional wrestling. So when I was a teenager, um, uh, like I, I don't remember how, how old I was, like maybe 14, 15 years old. I started to watch... Um, WCW and Russian TV 
Uh, it's first time when I really see uh, uh, professional wrestling. Before I just play in, in the games like Sega Mega Drive, Dandy, you know, like because uh, that time in Russia wrestling wasn't popular. Uh, they just started translated it uh, in a channel uh, in 1998. So it's how like. I started to watch this, and uh, when I moved to United States uh, in 2014, um, I started to do workout at Experience Fitness Gym in Woodbury. And a uh, couple of years later, I met a uh, few guys who already was a wrestler, like uh, Moses Mayhem. He, that time, he was a, a personal trainer in the gym. So and we talk about wrestling a lot, and uh, he said, "You know, maybe you wanna be part of professional wrestling." I said, "Sure, I won't do it. Like, but uh, how I can start do this?" And he said, "Like, talk with a can because like a year ago he's open uh, the academy in Minneapolis." So I was very shy this time, that time, and I said, "Oh." I don't really know him, but I, I saw him in the gym too, because we were in the same gym at that time. And he, and he said, don't worry about it, I will talk with him. So the next day, uh, Ken Anderson with his wife, uh, Anastasia, they came to me and uh, asked, like, do you want to be a professional wrestler? I said, yeah, why not? So he invites me to the academy, and that's how I started. It was 2018. Mm -hmm. so, that's it wow, wow that in yep that's interesting because um my next question to you is um you and moses mayhem had mm -hmm. a little feud there um can you tell tell people um what led to you guys feuding with each other in the ring um yeah it's supposed to be a long story with him not just a one match maybe like three or four matches mm -hmm. but uh his wife got pregnant so and he stopped doing this i don't i don't know for how long but we're just waiting when he will be available to continue and uh i was enjoying working with him he's a big guy i'm a big guy i think it's like you know it could be good fight, you know, and uh, yeah. He also, we are good friends with him. He is living in Florida too, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you know, and you know something? I interviewed him um, last month, and he mm -hmm. was talking. He was talking about you and whatnot, and um, telling me that um, I should interview you and whatnot. Yeah, so like, you know. I've been wanting to interview Draco for the longest, so it's like I was going to interview you, then this whole pandemic hit, and it it just canceled everything. Yep, it's yep. So, so finally, um, finally, we got to do it and whatnot. So yeah, because Moses Mayhem, I'm good friends with him as well. Um, like I said, he, he really cares about me and, um, you know, he appreciates everything that I do, um, interviewing all the wrestlers from, from all Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, no. I really, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a huge list. Um, it's just that it comes in full, full circle, you know. I just love doing these interviews because I like to get to, you know, know the wrestler outside of the character, you know. Yep. And that gives fans to, you know, get an inside in-depth of, you know, what, you know, what people, what re these wrestlers do off, you know, when they 
off the free time. So when I upload these videos on YouTube, they'll they'll get they'll get what you're coming from and and whatnot. And never who who knows they might come to wrestling show to see you. You know, all because of I gave you a platform and that's it. You know. Yep, and also like uh, like in a professional wrestling, I am a bad guy. So, but in real life, I am not that bad, you know. So, yeah, <laughs> people know you, like in real life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like your, I like your, um, I like you when you're in character too at wrestling shows. You know, you cap on say, I don't speak English. <laughs> I don't do this. And I said, like, Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's part it, of my. So <laughs> it's yeah. kind of uh, I like uh, like um, the idea of my gimmick. So like, if I would like to speak with the people, yeah, I do it. If I don't like people, like in my gimmick, so I said no, I don't speak English. So. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um... But um, yeah, I like I like you when you're a character and whatnot because I can feed off of that, and you know, and you're such a great wrestler, you know. Thank you. Um, you're such a great wrestler. Um, I would like to see you face Moses Mayhem. I know you guys had matches already, but I didn't get to see. It. Oh, so, you. Okay, so you wasn't. Yeah. There. So okay. Uh, I hope it can happen, you know, like maybe it can, can happen in Florida. I hope it can happen in MAW because uh, Moses, he is a legend of uh, Midwest. Oh, so yes. The people would like to see him again. He's still in a good condition, you know, big guy. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, he have a beast inside. He wants to fight. And I mean, like, he is yeah. ready time, just, you know. Just yeah. be in him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, if you, you know, Moses Mayhem is a legend, you know, in Minnesota, and people want to see more of him. I said, you know what? I'm gonna make this happen. I wanna, I wanna see you versus Moses Mayhem. You never know. I might get to film that match and put it on my YouTube channel so everybody can see it. But um. You two got quite a rivalry, and you know, I like to see that rivalry take place in Minnesota, not just in Florida. Yeah, sure. I mean, like in uh, Minnesota, so many good uh, promotions. Not only MAW, like SDW, like Iron Heart, and uh, like AWF. Um, yeah, AWF. It's a lot. I mean, like, so like like. They can bring us, like, if they want, you know, like, if fans want this match, we're ready. So, just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, my next question to you is this. Um, besides Face Moses Mayhem, mm -hmm. who would you want to face if given the opportunity? Uh, you know, like, I was very impressive when I was uh, on a Grand Slam 4. And uh, it was debut for many of students, and uh, you know, like they all so cool. I yeah. would like to work with everyone from the academy. You know, like they have uh, like very unique gimmicks, and uh, I I seen a few like big guys too. I think Diesel, Diesel Tank. Okay. Uh, I would like to work with them because I like big guys. You know, <laughs> Elsa. Okay. Probably, okay. I would like work with uh, Mitch Paradise. I think it's hell good. yeah! I was just about to say that you and Mitch Paradise one on one. Yep, because like a, a few days ago, uh, I was wrestled with a big guy like him, like tall guy, almost three hundred pounds, and I did body slam on him. You know, like it was so easy for me. He was uh, like, wow, <laughs> nobody did it for me before. I mean, like. Uh, I don't know if people seen or not before when someone did body slam on a uh, Mitch Paradise. So, mm -hmm. 
want to show them so I can do it. Uh huh. And there's also a lot of big guy. Um, I want to see you face. Um, Nick the Natural Nelson. He's also a big guy. I heard this name, but I think I seen him on a social media, but I don't remember how he looks. But uh, well, <laughs> I can tell you this: he, Nick Nelson, um, he has long hair. Almost look like Triple H. Okay. Almost. He he's that old. He got that old school kind okay. of look, you know. Almost similar than Triple H, but he has the longer hair than Triple H does. Um, I tell you, he's also a great talent. Um, he's from, I believe, North Dakota. Okay, okay, probably I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I probably seen him. Yeah, why not? Um, I open for this too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, cause he is a big. You know, hmm. you say you like to face big guys. It's like I'm naming some of the big guys that I have seen and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, because I think big guy versus big guys, people like especially like old school people, you know, like from nineties, they mm -hmm. would like it. But Elsa, I open to work with any size of guys, you know, like it's it doesn't matter for me. I just I think I think people want to see when big guy versus big guy. It's probably more interesting for them, you know. Yeah. It's because yeah, not I agree. Yeah, not yeah. many big guys right now in this business, you know. Mm -hmm. Not for the nineties, for example. Mm -hmm. And oh. also, there's also one other good wrestler, and today is his birthday. Um, uh, yes. JDX. Yep. I would like to work with him, too. So, why not? Yeah. Yeah. You versus JDX. That's also be a great match because he needs competition. And it's like, every, you know, every time... MAW throws an opponent for him. He always has that great match. And yeah. I figure if he can, if he face someone like you or. You know, you, like, you know? just only one moment. Like, um, I don't want to wrestle just, you know, like just the one match with someone. That's it. I would like, uh, like if if some promotion can build some story, you know, like just like couple matches or three matches, you know, like not just the one. Yes. So prefer to yes. Do you made a valuable point there. So you know, yeah, that's what I was talking to a friend about. You know, build up a storyline. You know, leading but to the match because we want to get fans hyped up for the anticipated match. Exactly. And that's what some and I'm not and I'm not trying to take a shot at anybody. That's what some, you know, promotions fail to do. You know, let's build a promo or a storyline or Yes. You know? I I absolutely agree. It's like it's a problem, you know, it's not um how can I say this like uh, it's a problem for every promotion, you know, like they just put some random matches and that's it. It's no promos, no storyline, just a match. Yes. For me, yeah. like, uh, I'm a fan of 90s, like, you know, from 90s. Like, I like when, people, like, like big promotions put some story, like, build a story, have so many uh, promos and a uh, and. You know, like it's build it, build it, build it, and uh, and uh, the last match is like a uh, the main one, and it's a big one. You know, like people waiting for this, people excited, and and finally it's happened. You know, not just you no know, random match and and done. <laughs> it's, for me, it's not interesting to watch too. You know, like I mean, that's why I prefer uh, if I do something. It's always some story. Like right now, we have story with with, with me and Brian Idol, so mm -hmm. we all you know, like have some pre-story be before our match. It's what I like. 
same mm-hmm. like the Moses made him. It was start in Wilmania three when I had a match uh, with a horse waggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he stopped me. That's why they like pin me and something, you know. And after we have match with the Moses and it's not done yet, you know. I mean, like, it's what I like, you know, mm-hmm. story, like a, like a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, for yeah. me, uh, yeah, for me, another thing is why, why uh, professional wrestlers stop doing promos. Because if I go in for some promotion, if I do something, I always put my promo. How you can open your character, how you can open your personality, how people mm-hmm. know what and what you're thinking about if you never do some promos you know yes. you're boring you're not interesting you know it's what exactly. i think exactly so, my point you know I mean, like, like, you can be like super good wrestler you can have so many skills but if you cannot do promos if you can open cannot open your character it's not mm-hmm. interesting you no know? yeah and and the thing you said about personality you gotta you when doing promos, you gotta you're you are camera, you know. You're you are you are on camera. You gotta you gotta sometimes get out of your comfort zone. You gotta say, Hey, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win that match and if you can't do a strong promo and if you can't you know, do you know? That's what's the problem with fellas. They don't do promos, you know, leading to the match or doing this. Just do a, do like a minute promo video. Yeah, fifty you seconds. Know? The rule fifty seconds. That's it. You don't need to do longer than fifty seconds. But for the fifty second seconds, you can show so much. You know, like you can mm-hmm. show personality. You can introduce yourself. And you can build some little story before you match. You can continue your story in the match, and you can continue your story after the match. You know, like it's like promo. It's part of professional wrestling. You know, it, you never will be a good wrestler if you cannot do promo. It's what I think. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I strongly agree. I strongly agree with you and. And you made a valuable, valuable point there because, you know, because I like to see the matches and whatnot as a fan, but at the same token, I want to see promos. I exactly. want to see storytelling. I want to see what leads up, you know, because that's what's going to get the fans excited and wanting to watch Absolutely more. right. Yes. Yes. And exactly like right now, I'm professional wrestler. Yeah, like um, I I watch everything from different angle. But I remember when I was a fan, I'm still a little of, like little bit fan too, you know. But sometimes I I watch like SmackDown or Raw or something. But like I I remember when I was a fan, and I, I remember what I really was like, you know, like. It's a promise. It's some like videos before some match, you know, like, like it was interesting for me. Not just much, everything together, put it together. That's why, that's why I like uh, new students, like what, uh, like uh, from the academy, because I see they hungry, they want to work, they fresh, and they do promos. It's what I like, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So my next question to you is, um, so when you're not wrestling and whatnot, what does Draco like to do when he's not wrestling? I like spend my time with my family, you know, especially with my son. Like, we play some games. And uh, I do work out because, you know, like... It's again, it's a part of professional wrestling. You should go to the gym, do workout, you should look good. Like, again, back to the 90s, everybody 
girl with a big condition, you know, they, they go big, they did workout, looks good. And for me, a wrestler, it's like a gladiator, you know, like, so uh, why it was interesting to watch wrestling for me too, because it's like big guys, you know, like, wow, like looks good. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's what I do too, like I do workout uh, and, and uh, right now I, I train people from my community, like I do personal training too, so. Okay. All right. All yeah. right. Because um, Moses Mayhem, um, Moses Mayhem, mm -hmm. he's a personal trainer and too, and he's also a uh, work in um, real estate, which, you know, mm -hmm. which, you know, I like, by the way. Um, yeah, so... So big prop, big props to uh, Moses Mayhem. He stays busy, you know. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I, I think, and right now, like because so many people ask me, like, oh, can you help with the workout? Like, can you, can you build some program I can pay for you? Now I'm thinking about uh, to open like in a social media, like some program where I can put my workout and people just can watch and and buy it, you know, if they like it. So it's my idea right now. Mm -hmm. And um, let's go back to um, let's go back to uh, what we was talking about. Mm -hmm. You think the bigger guys? There's a lot of big guy. I think he's on a chat right now. Mm -hmm. um, Bobby Brandon. He is also a big guy. He's young. Um, he's one of the great wrestlers too. And I think okay. you and him should go at it. Now, he's young and whatnot, but he's a damn good wrestler. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if you heard of Bobby Brandon, but... No, never, never. Mm -mm. First time. Yeah, right? oh, my goodness. Well, he's on my chat. He's, on, he's part of this live stream, so watching us. So, mm -hmm. um, he's... He's young. Um, he has dark hair. What, um, what usually working for? Huh? What promotion he usually working for? He usually goes to um, Cloud Nine Wrestling. You can see okay. him on Cloud Nine Wrestling. Mm -hmm. You can also see him. Um, I think Below Zero Wrestling. Okay, it's a two really good promotions. I heard about. Mm -hmm. Which is yep. Yeah, and I, I, he also he he also wrestles for um I forgot wh which one which other promotion he does um hopefully he'll leave in a chat because he usually wrestles for like um Cloud Nine Wrestling Below Zero Wrestling um there's a lot of ones I he like does. that's a promotion like heavy. Heavy wrestling or something like um, it's in Wisconsin, I believe. Uh, like heavy wrestling, some. I think it's heavy. I think you're trying to say heavy on wrestling. Maybe I mean like it's some it's some another promotion. I remember like they like mm -hmm. um, bring so many yeah. like legends and uh, they usually do uh, in some casino shows too. Mm hmm. No, yeah, that? I think. Oh, yeah, he does. Um, Midwest All Star Wrestling too. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep, he does that too. So. Yep. Yep. Um, you versus Bobby Brandon. Make a good match because, like I said, he can pick up. He can pick up some big damn dudes. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Especially right now. I don't know. Uh, especially right now what's happened in a uh, world between Russia, Ukraine, you know, like this situation. I think Russian gimmick is like the most popular heel right now, you know. And uh, like so many promotions text me too. Like, yeah, heavy on wrestling. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the phenomenal. Yeah, heavy wrestling went out of business, unfortunately. That's yep. what um Jaren said in yep. the chat. So, so uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, I would like to work for Cloud9, you said Cloud9, and... Uh, Cloud9 Wrestling. Yeah, Cloud9, yep. Below Zero, and uh, Heavy on Wrestling. Uh, this is like three promotion for who I really want to work for. So... Just, just <laughs> uh, Jaren, um, Jaren, who's in my, um, who's in the chat, he says, Bobby's afraid now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> Draco, no. come yeah, on! Like, now. You know, uh, yeah, like my moves, my uh, punches, kicks, looks like very like strong, and people think like I do it for real, you know, like. It's mm -hmm. very... But I can say, I'm very protective, very safety guy. So, mm -hmm. no. yeah, I've seen you wrestle. Yeah. yeah. I've seen you wrestle in person, no doubt about it. And you are always safe in the ring and well, no one protect nobody. Protect your opponent and protect yourself. You know? Yep, you gotta protect yourself, you gotta protect your opponent because like like um if you like if you were to get injured, you know, it's like if you're wrestling while you're injured, you know, and you try to pick somebody up you could potentially hurt your opponent, not yourself, exactly. you hurt your opponent as well. I mean, like, I was injured uh, a couple of years ago, and I know exactly how it feels, you know. And uh, after this, you know, I'm very, very, very safety, like, you know. Yes. So. Yeah, and that's, what, and that's what I like about, what I like about you, Draco, is, you know, you could pull out some damn good promos. Thank you. And you're a damn good wrestler too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. I try, I try. But I, I mean, like, I have a really good uh, trainers, like my coaches. Uh, my first coach was Ken Anderson. I spent like six months at the academy, and after that, I moved to Florida. And like you said, it was pandemic time. Everything was closed. Like no wrestling, no academy, nothing. So, and a year later, after pandemic time, I found a really good school with uh, Natalia Markova and Brian Idol. They, oh my gosh, they're so good. They're really good coaches. They know exactly what they do. And especially when we started, it wasn't many students. And they spent so much time for me and for, for a couple of other guys. And it was great. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so um, getting on to my next question is, um, and I want and I want your input on this. Mm -hmm. Now, now you know um, some wrestling fans um, can say some stuff, you know, like at wrestling shows and whatnot. Um, last month, okay. Mm -hmm. I won't name the name of the promotion, you know, I went to because mm -hmm. I want your input on this. I went to a wrestling show mm -hmm. last month. Um, me and my friends we were just having a, we just was having a great time at the show and whatnot. And all of a sudden, we get some drunk ass wrestling fans behind us saying some pretty foul language mm -hmm. rental slurps at at some of the at some of the wrestlers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I put up a post on social media that, you know, talking about my displeasure of the fans saying some pretty inappropriate stuff, especially when kids are in attendance. So I just want your input on what, you know, like if someone were to say some inappropriate stuff towards you, mm -hmm. what would you do in this situation? You know, like it's a good question. It's a really good question because, you know, my gimmick, especially I'm from Russia and I had so many situations. Uh, I was wrestling with some guy. Um, I don't want to say like what promotion was. 
And some, some guy showed me this. All my match, he showed me this. You know? Oh, no. Yeah. He was, a, he was a veteran of army, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but what I think, <laughs> what I think, the good one, um, if he showed me this, he really believed I'm Russian. So he really believed I'm a bad guy because I beat another guy so badly. And uh, people love him. He was like a really good uh, uh, baby face. And I beat him, you know, like, like crazy. So what I think uh, about this, so he truly believes I'm Russian and I'm a bad guy. So it's a good point. And other things, um, yeah, when like in the indie shows, we wrestle around people when they drunk or something, you know. So it's two things. Uh, first thing, uh, you should be professional, you know. It's the most important thing, you should be professional. Doesn't matter what they told you, uh, you should be professional. You cannot say something bad to them, you know, because you will be problem for promotion. Mm -hmm. Other things, if promotion have people like this and something happened like racism or something, especially around kids. So if it's kids there, it's exactly not 18 plus show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a problem of promotion. They should have a security. They should have a people like this. And these people supposed to talk with these people, you know. And if people not understand, just go out. You know, go away. Exactly. It's exactly. promotion because you work for this promotion. You're professional, right? So, right. And promotion supposed to be professional, and promotion supposed to protect you from fans <laughs> like this. You know. Exactly. Exactly my point. That's and it. yeah, I want to thank you for you know for your input on this because you know. As a fan, I go to these wrestling shows to have a good time, you know, be a fan, not put my hands on the wrestlers, and vice versa. Wrestlers don't put their hands on the fans and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I've been going to independent pro wrestling shows for, my goodness, almost 12 years. And I seen and heard a lot of stuff, but I won't say on on here because, yeah, I mean, I mean, some people still believe it, you know. Like some people think like it's like everything so real, and mm -hmm. like yeah, and <laughs> they don't know, like, and they don't understand that like you got you wrestlers are in character, and that's what the fans don't get is. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like, you know, like, like, like some people ask me like, oh, you're Russian, you know, like, uh, Russia is, you know, bad people, blah, 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 blah. Why you play a Russian gimmick or something, you know, like I said, you know, like, uh, you're like a bad guy or what? I said, you know, like when, when you watch some movies and some mm -hmm. actors play Russian people, so mm -hmm. they actors, you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, it not means they bad like you know or something. Yeah. And that's and, and, and going back to and that's the reason why I like about your character, you know, you play this Russian character gimmick and whatnot. And um, you know, you do a good job at it, you know. Thanks. I've seen you wrestle, you know. And it's just that fans just needs to understand. The exactly. difference between being in character and being and not being Ab yeah, absolutely yes. That's why, like, uh, like uh, again, like a couple of days ago, I was in the show, and uh, it just was my f debut. Uh, and uh, after my match, I just show up uh, when it was intermission time. Walk around, uh, walk around with people, just and speak with the kids, you know, take the pictures with them, smile. And people were so friendly, you know, like talk to me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, they understand, like, you know, like uh, they see you in the ring, you're totally different guy. 
Maybe. When I drink, no, I'm drago. That's it. <laughs> when mm. I'm outside around people, you know, in an intermission time, and I'm a real human, you know, like like who I am, like in real life. So people like it, kids like it, you know, and yeah. then. Then they understand you're not that bad guy, you know. You're not that bad guy. So yeah, and, and and I get what you're saying too. You know, um, you know, like I said, um, you know, you gotta stay in character twenty four seven and blah 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 blah. I don't, and, I don't think it's right. You know, like when you like all the time in your character, especially in the locker room. What the hell? <laughs> Yeah, what the hell? You know? When you, you, know, you don't have actor, like when you actor when you in the movie, yes, you're this guy. When you outside of the movie, around people, you different guy, right? You you're like a guy. exactly. So it's what I try to do, you know, like I don't think you should be in the gimmick all the time, like twenty four and seven. Mm -mm. No. 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 Come on now, <laughs> but um, but I, I'm just saying like some wrestlers like to do it. I'm not gonna name names, but oh, yeah, some I, wrestlers I, like I, to do it. But they gotta understand you can't be in character twenty four seven. You know, say it's not like WWE. I, I, like, maybe, maybe depends of gimmick. Maybe like if you superhero, blah blah blah, and and kids kids will want to see you superhero. Uh, like after the match, you know, like. Take your pictures, you know, and take a uh, yeah, uh, take your pictures, autograph. Yeah, maybe you 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 can stay in your gimmick, you know, like because you're superhero. But when you're a bad guy, especially a Russian, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not a good idea to do, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand your point. Yeah. So, um, so getting to my point, um. Getting back to what, what we were saying about, um, you know, fans, just, you know, be respectful. Be respectful towards the wrestlers. It's especially, place, exactly, yeah. You, no matter what, no matter what matter race or anything like that, that's all, that's all we ask is be respectful. Be professional. You know? Keep it professional. It's Keep very... it 100. Yep. Keep it PG. <laughs> so, you know, just have fun. You it's, know, that's what... It's, it's most important thing you said. Just have a fun. When you wrestle, when you're a professional wrestler, you must have a fun. Just If you don't have a fun, it's not for you. And again, for the crowd, just go there. And have a fun, you know, like see like bad guy, good guy, good guy, beat bad guy, blah blah blah. Done, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know, like you watch some movies, so it's good movie. After the movie, like wow, it was good. So, mm -hmm. It was interesting. It's like it's it's show. <laughs> it's not real fight. It's not MMA. It's not UFC. You know, it's a show. It's entertainment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm reading some of the comments now. Um, someone says I can't pronounce the name, so they <laughs> said thank you for supporting indie wrestling. Oh, probably your name. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're very welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome because um, this is what. This is what I do, you guys. I go, I go to these indie pro wrestling shows. I have a good time. Sometimes I go there to like film the matches and then, um, and then um, post it on my YouTube channel and whatnot. I also interview wrestlers. You know, yeah. comments. Uh, Eric Nelson. He is a um... Uh, promoter of Strength Hall Championship Wrestling in Georgia. Mm -hmm. really, right? So <laughs> he will bring so many uh, students from Minnesota and he's shown uh, February 24th and 25th. 
So I'm I'm very excited for that show. So hi, Eric. Okay. All right. Well, well, if we have some wrestlers in mind, if he wants to bring them into Minnesota, um, tell them to reach out to um Midwest All Star Wrestling or Steel Domain Wrestling or you know a American Wrestling Federation. They're all on Facebook, so. Yeah, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you have like uh, Mike. He is an Asian sensation. Uh, he is a manager of uh, good guys. I mean, like good guys. I mean, like good wrestlers. And uh, mm -hmm. he also working for Stanglehold and for another promotions. Mike, I think you're from Seattle, I believe. I'm not really sure, but I think he's from Seattle. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's a good manager. Oh, okay. Like uh, uh, Stringer Fold, recent, he's a manager of uh, Bad Guys, World Elite. So we are all heels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so um, I believe that's all the questions I have for you draco um um now we usually i and and my um and my um show with with this question on where can wrestling fans follow you on social media oh they can follow me on social media on instagram uh, yeah, like I put my uh, like original name on uh, Instagram. I probably need to change it to the real Drago because probably people try to find me. And uh, in my Instagram, so they can follow me in uh, Facebook. Uh, I have a uh, like the real Drago page, and also I have my name page. I mm -hmm. it's always there. And uh, I have a Twitter, but I'm not really use it, but. Everybody told me I must use it, but I will probably. So just don't have a time for Twitter. That's it. And I have a, another social media for Russian people, big community. They're very excited to see my matches and everything, what I do for them. Because mm -hmm. I am only one original Russian professional wrestler in the United States, my, uh, like man. We have Ali Markova, Masha Slamovich, but and me. Okay. So yeah. And, and um, you also have not just my podcast. You have a lot of podcasts coming up next month. You want to mm -hmm. tell everyone, everyone what? I, tell, I I don't remember exactly the name of the guy, and uh, he is from it's South. Indy, I think it's Indy Talk with um, Jaren and Jesse. Yeah, General Jesse, it will be on December 21st, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. and it will be the second podcast. Uh, and another one will be this Friday uh, with a guy from S South Carolina. So, yeah. Yeah, you can, you are on high demand, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, what, um, that's what my uh, friend Jaren says. You are on high demand right now. <laughs> it's, it's funny, you know, like it just like just yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I well, like it, I like it, and um, it's it's big. Some big things ca coming soon in the next year. I don't want to say right now what what it will be, but it will be yeah. a huge opportunity for me. Uh, and uh, some another promotion from Ohio, Columbus. The guy texted me and. Uh, he wants to open new promotion. He okay. also all like big time wrestling. It's like very popular promotion too. Mm -hmm. uh, and he wants me to be a good guy. Wow. Yeah. Wow, like said, that would be oh, real interesting to see. It's very interesting. Yeah, he wants uh, to bring uh, Nikita Kolov and he will be introduced me there like a good guy. And also mm -hmm. he wants to build, build a good story like why I'm bad? Well, I'm a good guy, not bad guy. So it will be. Oh, oh, let me cut you off right there, Drake. Um, Jared says he can't wait for the return 
of the real Draco on Indie Talk. Me too. Yeah, I, I, yeah, me too. Uh, mm -hmm. Like from uh, last time uh, when we had a podcast with uh, Jerry, uh, I mean, uh, and right now it's it's happened a lot, so I can I can I, I can talk about this too. So a lot story. Okay. Yeah, it will be interesting. I promise. Mm -hmm. And I'll be watching Andy. Um, I I do watch um, Andy talk too, so I can't they, wait to see that episode. Yeah, they, uh, they, 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 they do they do good things, you know. Like I mean, like I like them podcasts. They bring always um, people from North North Dakota, uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, especially. Uh, new guys too, you know, like I seen like some podcast uh, on a Halloween with the Apex. He's a cool guy too, like with a cool gimmick. And I would like to see again him. You need, you need to bring Apex. You know Apex? Mm, Apex? Never. Apex? 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 No, Apex. Oh, Apex. Sorry, oh, Apex. oh, yes. I know who he is. Yeah, I need to bring him on there. I need to bring him on here too because um yeah. I we got I um I wanna bring him on next because you know I like, got some things to talk to him about. Mm -hmm. And and I uh, like his uh, story of life, really cool one too. So uh I mean like story of life, yeah. And uh he's a cool guy, I really like him and 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 um Mora, sorry, I'm so bad with the names. It's another new guy from um, the Academy of Ken Anderson. Uh, he's a, I think, Mexican, Mexican gimmick. Uh, Mora or Mosa, some Mora, blah blah blah. I, oh my God, I forgot. I don't even know. Yeah, he, I mean, like, he's a cool guy too. Yeah. Um... I don't even know some of the new people from the academy, other than um, I think other Cho, than the, like Cho, uh, yeah, Miles Mora, yeah, Mila, yeah, he yeah, Miles Mora, yeah, bring him yeah. too. Such a good guy too. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, I like okay. to bring in new guys. I, like, I would like to see, it, you know, like this podcast for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, Draco, I don't want to take up aim over your time because that's i bet you got some things to do but thank you so much for doing this with me and you know you're welcome to you know like if you got something coming up that you want to bring bring on michael's corner let me know oh, oh yeah i'm always open always open i mean like yeah i like do it i like talk with people you know especially say what i think and everything you know and sometimes mm -hmm. Like me and you, we found the same things together, you know, like about promos, about about crowd, about professionalism, you know, like mm -hmm. it's to talk with the people and you see like they think the same, you know. Yeah. Okay, well, Draco, you have a great evening and um good. we'll see you we'll see you next time, all right? Sounds good. Have a all good right. one. Yep, bye. Bye. So that was an interesting interview. Um, Draco, one of the nicest, nicest people. You guys may think he's a he's a bad guy. He's only a bad guy when he's wrestling. But overall, he's one. He's a good guy. And I want to thank Moses Mayhem for suggesting to me to do an interview with Draco. So, okay, you guys, you know the drill. Follow me on social media. Facebook, Michael's Corner, not Michael's Corner. Twitter, at Michael Pam. YouTube is Michael's Wrestling Channel. I'm gonna repeat that again. My YouTube channel, Name is Michael's Wrestling Channel, not Michael's Corner. That's the name. 
That's my Facebook fan page. But my YouTube, my YouTube is Michael's Wrestling Channel. And some people get confused by that. So sometimes I have to keep repeating it until you finally figure it out. And that's what I'm all about. So, you guys, thank you for watching this episode. And I will see you guys next time.